Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, July 30th, 2024, let's get into it. Now, these are the easy videos. If you watched yesterday's video, <laughs> it's a, that's a hard video. I think I was up till 2 in the morning editing that video, and uh, it, uh, it, uh, it gets kind of crazy. Uh, so let's just go through a couple of uh, X posts, and, uh, and this will be a simple, quick video. Uh, Douglas McGregor, Mike Pompeo's alleged uh, Trump peace plan for Ukraine in the Wall Street Journal proposes steps to end the war in Ukraine that are paramount to applying a fresh coat of paint to a car that is already wrecked beyond recognition. And if you followed my video yesterday, I said Mike Pompeo was an idiot. Uh, he should never have been in the Trump administration, and Trump included many people in his administration that shouldn't have been there uh, in, in 2016. But like I said, he's down in Mar-a-Lago with a new cabinet, a shadow government, and uh, maybe uh, maybe he's learned his lessons. Lifting the few remaining restrictions on military aid to Ukraine won't rescue the collapsing Ukrainian armed forces from the total annihilation or restore Washington's military or dip diplomatic uh, kick credibility uh if you haven't been watching uh we got well um, i i i think we're approaching about two well three thousand uh, dead ukrainians a day uh this is unsustainable uh it, it's it's shocking to me that so many ukrainians want to sacrifice their lives uh for a a, a, a dying cause i mean seriously i mean they should just turn on the officers and and kill them and say hell no we won't go hell no we won't go but uh you know but they're fighting for nato and uh and money talks i mean you know you got billions of dollars there i uh, you know well trillions at this point um so pompeo's refu refu proposal is analogous to bringing a hammer to a chess match the hammer won't alter the outcome of the game and it completely misses the point of strategic thinking. It's time to suspend all military aid to the corrupt Ukrainian regime, withdraw U.S. citizens in and out of uniform from Ukraine, and offer to treat the proposals Moscow tabled in December 2021 and January 2022 as the basis for a negotiated settlement. Of course, it goes on from there, so I want to get on to some other topics. Uh, uh, this will be in the video. Uh, holy shit. Israel just bombed Beirut, Lebanon. <laughs> this is from Jason Hinkle. Uh, you know, it was funny because yesterday I was apologizing because I put up a uh, post uh, saying, you know, that Israel had bombed Lebanon. and and But I couldn't find any confirmation of that, so I took it down. And now, <laughs> a day later, <laughs> I'm proved correct. <laughs> I do want to just read you one quick quote we're getting in right now from a senior Israeli official speaking with Channel 12, one of the largest Israeli news stations. This official says whether or not war breaks out depends on Hezbollah. We've seen a lot of this back and forth across the border over the past several days, pointing the finger, Hezbollah officials threatening Tel Aviv, Israeli officials threatening Beirut, and tonight the Israelis targeting Beirut with that airstrike. We'll have to wait in the coming hours ahead to gather more information to determine if that strike was successful and whether or not Hezbollah will respond. Sandra, John. Um, Trey, just uh, we're, we're, uh, we'll give you a break to uh, gather more news here as we bring in Kellogg. Just a, a second, crossing right now is uh, on this Israeli strike uh, targeting this head of Hezbollah operations room. Uh, what we're learning right now is the fate of that leader, of that commander, remains unknown, uh, according to three senior security sources telling Reuters. We're trying to gather more information on that. Trey, we'll check back in with you shortly. Thank you. Uh, holy shit. All right, so we'll have that in the video. All uh, right, here we go. Our military is not prepared for this. Just in, Israel conducts airstrike on Hezbollah in Lebanon. Says all-out war is not off the table. So we, we're looking at regional war in the Middle East. Uh, you know, and I, I put up the Erdogan stuff. Uh, Turkey may get involved. I'm sure Iran might uh, be in there. Uh, this is Noctis uh, driving. 
Together we are unstoppable. They want us to fight. They want us to focus on the differences. They want us to ignore them and point of anger at each point uh, anger at each other. They are deadly afraid of this. Remember, we may see this a bit differently, but we are all branches of the same tree. And, uh, and by the way, it was uh, it's a great photograph. I hope I can work this into the video. And it shows Muslims and Christians working together. And so I hope that that, that actually takes place. Uh, Black in the Empire. Um, Gaddafi was excited about America uh, electing a black president with the name Obama. But he uh, hoped that he would uh, lead a better relationship with the United States. The Obama administration, <laughs> I mean, talk about false uh, or, or stupid thinking. Uh, the Obama, well, Hillary Clinton, they, I mean, they hunted him down. To get, get, do you remember? I mean, he had a freaking stake rammed right up his ass. Uh, Obama administration killed him, destroyed Libya, and Hillary laughed about it. And if you don't remember, Hillary was laughing about it. She thought it was great that, uh, that this guy had a freaking stake rammed up his ass and was uh, brutally murdered. Uh, but remember that. So I do agree with that. Uh, DC Dranko, two things to note in this explosive new video of the Trump assassin. Cops were surrounding the building perimeter for multiple minutes before the shooter took shots at Trump. Yeah, that, that was a recent video that came out, and I keep telling you, uh, if you have any video, get it online, man. you got to get it online right away. Uh, the FBI is covering up the whole uh, uh, fiasco that took place on that day. Uh, what is it, July 13th? Uh, why was Trump not pulled off the stage in an abundance of caution? FBI confiscated the man's, uh, man's phone and only recently released it. Uh, well, I, I can't believe they released it, but any. Why did the FBI wait too long to release this phone? Were they suppressing the video? <laughs> I mean, I can't even believe people are asking these questions. Of course the FBI is suppressing everything. They're covering up everything. They've cleaned up uh, the house. They've, 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 they've whitewashed the crime scene. They took down the bleachers. There's no way to conduct an investigation at this point. Uh, so anyway, Sniper's Nest View, uh, released by Dave uh, Stewart on Butler. And so, you know what, I, I tell you, that's, that's what I'm saying. we got to get all this video out. So we can do a citizen's investigation of what really took place on uh, uh, July 13th. Uh, Kamala Harris is holding a campaign rally in Florida. And, and, and by the way, I'll, I'll put this video up in here. And uh, well, I guess we're kind of getting to the end of the video here. I, I got a, 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 a Russian. Uh, uh, I want to show you what modern warfare looks like in uh, the video. Well, let's just watch that right now. Two months ago, as Ukrainian troops fled from Acheretina, it was more or less intact. Since then, Ukrainian artillery has reduced it to rubble. The rubble, in turn, is being ground into dust. Every few minutes, another Ukrainian kamikaze drone flies above us, seeking and searching. <laughs> We spend more time hiding than moving, but it isn't so one-sided. Just outside Ocheretina, Russian drone operators wreak their own destruction. We are striking targets. On average, we use 10 to 15 drones per day. We work both on infantry and moving targets, tanks, armored vehicles, which usually rotate at night. There's a payload for every occasion. Anti-tank warheads, fragmentation bombs, high explosives for tearing apart bunkers, and more. This is an incendiary munition, based on its flammable mixture. It's summertime now, so it is useful for burning, so that there is less foliage, less cover, and better visibility. Today, they start out by softening up the enemy. North, west and south of Ocheretina, Russian forces are on the offensive. Every day now, they push the Ukrainians back further than they did in a month in 2023. This is today's first assault. 
Все, молодцы, мужики, также двигайтесь прямо, прямо двигайся, а то группа идет. Прямо вдоль, молодцы, все прямо. Давай, давай, прыгай, прыгай, аккуратно, под ноги смотреть, под ноги. Там башкир, меня ждете, не выходите, ждете меня. Прыгай, прыгай, вопорник, прыгай, братан, прыгай, прыгай, прыгай туда. We are at a forward command post. Chita, the battalion commander, personally oversees every assault. Today, they are breaking Ukraine's last few lines of defense outside the village of Timofeevka. Прострел, прострелил. Ой, как учили, молодец, как учили тебя. Аккуратно, вот он еще один пустой. Аккуратно только, молодец, гранату. Ой, хорошо, молодец, солнышко. Зачищай, заходи, зачищай. For Chita, this isn't just work. The assault troops are his men. He knows every one of them. Chita does everything possible to keep them safe and pushing. Да, вон там видно прямо, они шевелятся. Вот за него. Там вот у меня эти мои сидят. Across the front lines, the quality of Ukrainian troops has fallen. Motivation and skills have degraded, but they compensate with an abundance of artillery and drones. It is never easy. Every day we advance at least 100 to 150 meters. The task set by the senior chief to take out the enemy's defense site is carried out. How are the assault troops holding up? They have a fighting spirit. Everyone is ready for the motherland, for Russia. We are fulfilling the tasks set by the supreme commander-in-chief. This is just one assault by one battalion pushing beyond Achiretina. There are dozens and dozens more every day. The momentum has undeniably shifted, and Kiev, Berlin, London and Washington no longer speak of victory on the battlefield. Morad Gazdiev, RT, from Achiretina, Donetsk Republic. Okay, so that's kind of what uh, modern warfare looks like. And uh, so it says Americans are the most propagand propagandized population on the planet. And the proof, most of us think that we're the good guys. <laughs> we're the baddies, man. We are the empire. All we do is wage war around the world, whereas China and Russia are actually trying to uh, uh, help nations. I mean, Russia's building a nuclear power plant down in Africa. Uh, China's on the Belt and Road Initiative. Do you think that the United States does anything but bomb and, and destroy around the world? I mean, it, I mean, I, I, and it's sad to say, I, I, I love my country and I want us to, to be better. But right now, we're on a path to self-destruction. Uh, so nobody knows less about imperialism than, the United, than Americans. It's an amazing testimony, uh, a combination of propaganda censorship and willful ignorance. So if you watch the mainstream media... <laughs> You know, I, and my buddy, he always encouraged me, he goes, watch the mainstream media. What's the point? All it is is propaganda. I mean, we're worse than the Soviet Union at this point. If you watch, uh, I mean, how many videos do you want to see of everybody on every ABC, CBS, MSDNC, uh, uh, you know, whatever, CNN, they all parrot the same narrative. It's whatever the CIA or the government tells them to say. I mean, we got no news anymore other than YouTube or Odyssey. I mean, you know, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get my videos up everywhere. Anyway, that's it. Peace out. Stay free.
run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.